Welcome back to the Joy of Development. Today, we're going to be wrapping up our under construction method for our procedurally generated levels project. The first thing we're going to cover is actually something I forgot to set up in the previous episodes. Up until now, the randomness of our rooms has depended on the doors spawning them. And while this does work, it does limit the variety of rooms that you'll experience. So on our room actor, we're going to create a new seed variable that we can use to make a random stream. Then we'll just assign that value to our room stream. Have that node be the first thing that executes on event begin play, and it's all set. Now in our door actor, whenever we spawn a new room, we want to generate a new random seed for it. So we'll use our door stream to generate a random integer, and then set that as the seed value. Next, I want to discuss a slightly more elaborate method for shifting the room. Our entry points usually try to spawn on the bottom left corner of the room, only shifting to another position if they're forced. While this works, it doesn't give a whole lot of variety to our rooms. This method will randomly place the room shift within the available space. We have a new integer variable called space, and we're going to add one to it, and set that as our room tile's y value. The minimum value for our shift is now space minus the right limit, and we clamp that value to make sure that it's at least zero or above. You can set the max value of the clamp to space, as we know that it's never going to exceed that value. Then we're going to take space and left limit and get the minimum value of the two, and we'll set that as the maximum value for our shift. To get the space variable, we're going to take our right limit and our left limit and add them together. Then we'll take the minimum value between that and our room size limit. Now we'll get a random integer between zero and that number. The result will be a randomly shifted and sized room that fits within the available space. So now we'll preview the game and show you how this looks. Opening the first door, you can see an immediate change. Rather than spawning on the lower left corner, it's now spawned on the lower right. Now if we open a second door, the entrance is right in the middle. And on the third door we open up, we actually end up with just a long hallway. For the final tested room, the entrance has an offset of 3 out of 4. So if you're hoping for a method with a little more variety on the entryway, there you go. Now the final thing we'll be covering for this video and for the under construction method, will be our overlapping doors and walls. We're going to jump into our wall or door reconstruct method. If you remember from the previous videos, we'd been bypassing a lot of code in this function. I collapsed that code down into a macro, both to make the blueprint look cleaner, and because we're going to need to use the code elsewhere. So let's connect that up, jump inside the macro, and see what's going on. We're going to take our rotation, and we're going to get the axes, x is our forward vector, y is our right vector, and z is our up vector. We're going to multiply x by 200, we're going to multiply y by 20, and we're going to multiply z by 200. We're going to add each of those results to our location, then we're going to transform that location into world space. We'll set the result as our start point on a line trace. Next, we're going to multiply the right vector by minus 40. We'll add that to our start point in local space. Then we'll transform that location to world space and set that as our endpoint. If it hits, we're going to get the class of the hit actor. We're going to check if its class is a door. If it is a door, we're going to cast to the door and set its roomify variable to false. If it's not a door, we can assume that the hit actor was just a wall. And if it is a wall, we don't want to spawn a new one, so we'll just leave that blank. And if there was no hit result at all, we'll finish the macro and move on to the rest of the function. Now we have to jump into the spacer function because we spawn walls there too. We'll put the macro before each of the wall spawns. For the first wall spawn, we only need to change its location. So we'll use a make vector node. And same as before, minus 400 on the x, plus 400 on the y. And then we'll plug that into each of these three locations. And on the second wall we have a make rotator node, and we're going to rotate it by 180 degrees on the z axis and we'll plug that into all three rotations. With that set up, our under construction method is complete. We'll preview the level and we'll start opening some doors. Following the same path we did last time, getting to the fourth room, we open up both the doors. Entering the second door, we look at the left wall and we'll notice that one of the walls isn't labeled. Well, if we get close to it, you can see a green line representing a positive hit result. So since there was a wall already here, it didn't bother spawning a new one. 
Were this a door, it would simply disable its roomify variable. Now with all that set up, our under construction method is complete. We'll be covering alternative methods in future videos, as well as starting entirely new projects. Until then, experiment with this technique and see what you can come up with. Thank you for watching The Joy of Development. If you enjoy the channel, please be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash that like button.